the index of refraction is defined as C, index of refraction defined by C over B. Or if you have medium number one, this is uh, medium number one, the vacuum, medium number one, and you have the glass, which is medium number two, the index of refraction is given by the speed of light in the vacuum over the speed of light in the medium. So the speed of light in the vacuum is given by C. C over B. So now I'm drawing something. Okay, this is it is basically the same figure, but I zoom over here. I zoom. So, but before that, I want to tell you, I want to, you to rememorize uh, about the wavefronts. Have you learned about wavefronts before? Okay, so I'm just going to refresh this for you. Okay, this is my wave. And then I have, uh, okay, so I have my peak over here and my peak over here. And, I, and, and then I have my dips. I have my dips over here and here. So for now, I'm just considering the peaks, okay? The distance from here, sorry, this is the time axis. So the time taken from one peak to another is T. Let's say if I change this to the position instead of the time, I'll re-explain this here. So basically this will become my lambda, right? This is the lambda. So the distance from here, to here is given by lambda. So if I flip, not flip, if I twist my wave, if I loop my wave from the top, I'll have this. So this is equivalent to this. Are you okay with this? So this is the wavefront. These are the wavefront, this one, this one, and this one. So the distance from here to here is given by lambda. Distance from here to here is lambda. Okay? I hope you are okay, yeah? So now I'm going to explain why does light bends in the glass. Okay? So when you have the peak, okay? For example, if I, I'm using the same figure here, but I zoom this particular part. I zoom, yeah, I zoom. So this is my surface. This is medium number two. This is medium number one. This is the vacuum. This is the medium or maybe the glass. So I have my wave friends. So first thing, first things first, I need to draw some dots here, here, here. Here, 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 and here. So, okay. This is my wavefront. Okay, this is the wavefront. So, the distance from here to here is lambda. Same goes to here, and here is lambda. Same goes here to here, lambda, and so on. Okay? So, the direction of propagation is towards this direction. It is moving at the speed of light, C. So, well, basically we are talking about light. So, it, C is the speed of light in vacuum. So, when, when the wave fronts enter the medium, do you think you have the same spacing, lambda? I don't think so, because the speed has changed. So, C is equal to F lambda. F is fixed. Okay, the frequency is fixed because the energy is there, lambda will change. So if I have V, what should I do to reduce my speed? So I have left with my lambda. So my lambda should be reducing so that, so that my speed is being reduced. Are you clear with that? Yeah? Do you think it is logical if I just take uh, maybe from here, uh, I'll just draw this, draw, Is it logical? Let's say if I have, this is, I mean, these are the new wind fronts inside the medium. Do you think it is logical if I do this? 
I don't think so because the wave front needs to be connected. So here I have a discontinuation here, here, which is not logical. So what the nature, what the nature has to do, or what the light has to do, is to bend itself so that it is. I mean, the wave fronts are connected, but they have a new lambda. So instead of this, which is not logical, I'll just reverse everything. So that the wave front uh, in, uh, in the outside region is connected to the wave front in the medium. They have to be connected together. But to reduce the wavelength, so I have my new wavelength because the speed has been reduced, so my wavelength is being reduced. So I have a smaller spacing. That's the reason why the light is bending itself because it wants to connect with the wave front, but it also wants to reduce uh, the wavelength. So that's why it has to be, it has to be bent. The, the direction of light propagation is over here. So you, if I draw a mini diagram here, this is uh, medium number two, this is medium number one. So it seems that I have my light coming from here to here, and then it will bend towards that direction. It will bend towards that direction. So this is the normal. So when I mention the normal, means it is a line which is perpendicular to the surface. Well, you can have any surface. Maybe you can have a surface like this. So you have to take the tangent to the surface, and then the normal is perpendicular to the tangent of the surface. Okay. So when light enters at this point, so it will get refracted. So this is your theta. This is your theta. So this is the normal to the surface, and light enters from here. So this is theta. This is theta prime. So of course, I can extend uh, a new line parallel to my direction of propagation, maybe over here. So I have my normal to the surface here. This is my normal. Let me draw using a different color my normal okay so this is the incident light okay so of course if i extend this the theta here this is the angle of incident or the incident angle this is the incident angle this is my normal so i have another uh, line which is parallel to the direction of propagation or the second wave which is inside the medium which is uh, the wave which is being slowed down so i have my theta over here as theta prime will you be able to accept that because this is my normal this is my uh, uh, exiting light wave so this is the angle after refraction or the angle of refraction this is the angle of incidence so the angle here is basically um, the angle here is basically the same. Okay. If you see the triangle here, if I focus at this particular triangle, this is of course 90, 90 degrees. And then if I take another, uh, sorry, if I take another triangle over here, so the angle here is theta prime. They are the same because of the geometry. You don't ask me why. Yeah? I think you have done this during your form 5, form 4. And you have hexagons and you need to predict the angle. But it, they are basically the same. And this is 90 degree because the direction of propagation here is perpendicular to the wave front. I hope you guys are okay. If you are, if you are getting confused, you just go back and then later I'll upload my video and you, you watch again and again. If you look at the triangle here, I have my first triangle and my second triangle. Sine of theta, this is uh, my theta, is O opposite divided by H. It's equal to lambda over L. The distance from here to here is L, for example. L. And then I have sine of theta prime, which is 
O over H, opposite over H. So it's lambda prime over L. But the frequency of both waves are the same. So from the time taken from here to here is basically the same as the time taken from here to here. But the distance, I mean the wavelength, is different. Because the, the second wave here in the medium is moving slower. And I have uh, in, in the vacuum, the wave is moving faster. So that's why it needs to stretch out uh, the, the wavelength. So that the peaks, from one peak to another, they are, um, I mean, the frequency should be the same. So I have my delta t here. So my delta t, so my lambda is the distance from here to here. So the distance s equals to, s over t is equals to the velocity, right? So here, my distance is from here to here, which is lambda which is lambda, but my V is C, right? So I'm going to replace this with C. And T is the time taken, delta T. So I'm rearranging this, so I have my lambda is equals to delta T times C. Same goes to this one. My lambda prime is given by the speed of, this, of the wave in the medium, V, times delta T. So I substitute this guy and this guy into the respective lambdas. So I have sine of theta. I'm just going to replace this, yeah? So my lambda now, I take it from here to this one, C delta T. And then I replace this guy, lambda prime, with this one. Now it is becoming V delta T. Okay? And then I have two common terms. This one, if I highlight this, and then I highlight this as well. Okay? They are the same. So that's why I'm removing the two terms. So I bring my C down here. Then I bring my V down here as well. Sine of theta over C is equals to delta T over L. Are you agree with me? Yeah? So I have my sine of theta prime over V is equal to delta T over L as well. So, I can equate both equations. So, because I have uh, two common terms, this one and this one. So, I have sine of theta over C equals to sine of theta prime over V. But remember that the refractive index is given by C over V. For the first medium, the speed is C. So, N1 is equal to C over C. Right. Am I right? So, because V here, this, uh, this, is, this is a formula. So, the refractive index for the vacuum is given by C divided by, because the speed of light in the vacuum is C, I just insert here. So, instead, I have my n equals to 1 for a vacuum. Remember that. So that's why. And the next, sorry, I have V for my uh, second wave inside medium number 2. So in the medium number 2, um, it is C over V. V which is the speed of this uh, the, in, in the vacuum. Okay? This is, this is the V here is general. Not the V for, for the second medium. It is general, just a formula. But if you want to find the refractive index of the first medium, then you replace V with C. But if you want to find the refractive index of the second uh, medium, you just replace V inside V, which is V. So it is quite confusing, but you have to bear this in mind. So for example here, uh, let's say if I replace this with V1, so I'm going to replace all C with V1 to avoid the confusion. This is V2. This is V1. This is V2. And then this is V1. This is V2. And then I multiply both sides with C and C because I want to manipulate the equation so that I can replace C over V with N. So that's why I'm having I replace this with C. Sorry, I'm replacing this with N1 then I'm replacing this with N2. 
But for this case, we are having the vacuum, so V1 is C. So C over C is 1. So the refractive index is basically 1. This is basically 1, okay? So now I can deduce that N1 sine theta is equals to N2 sine of theta prime. Or you can say this is theta 1, this is theta 2. Are you okay with the derivation here? Well, you can go through my video again after this, and you can watch it again and again. And if you if you don't understand it, you can come to me and ask me. Okay. The reason light bends is because it wants to fit itself with the wave front from 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 the previous medium. I have this my surface and my medium number one and then medium number two, and then the wave front from the medium number one is lambda, and the wave front. For the wave, uh, for for sorry, the spacing of the wave fronts for the medium number two is lambda prime. So it wants, so the wave wants to fit itself. So it needs to bend. Remember that. That's the reason why light bends in the glass. So I have my Snell's law over here. And then I have another situation here. Just some tricky situation. Basically, now you have understood the meaning of normal to the surface. So the angle between the light and the normal to the surface is given by the incidence or the, 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 the refracted angle. For example, I do have a question. I have many glasses, many slabs of glass. Okay. I do it this way. So I have my light entering here this is the normal to my surface the incident angle is theta i and then of course it will bend so the index of refraction for this guy is n naught and the index of refraction of this guy is 2 n naught and this one is 3 n naught 4 n naught 5 n naught 6 n naught so n naught is the index of refraction for the first slab Meaning to say the glass is getting denser and denser. So of course, the trajectory will be something like this. Going here, becoming horizontal. Right. So I want to ask you a question. What will be uh, the, uh, the, the refracted, not really refracted, I mean the outgoing light. What is the direction of the outgoing light? Is it going here? How many says this is true? Yeah, how many says this is true? Will it be horizontal? Can you raise your hand if you think this is true? Or maybe it is going over here? Or maybe over here? It should be going down, but what is the outgoing angle? I've got another question. Yeah. Say it. Same, yeah, correct. Do you know the reason why it is the same? Because I can have, this is sine of theta i should be equals to n1. This is vacuum, so I'll just remove this, yeah? This is equals to 1. It's equals to n2 sine theta 2. So sine theta 2 is over here. Which is also equals to, but this guy, is equals to n3 sine theta 3 also equals to n4 sine theta 4 right regardless of the index of refraction in the middle so meaning to say I've got many glasses glass slabs in the middle so uh, it, it could be uh, this one is n naught this one is is it this one is 2 and not. This is 3 and not. But when it reaches here, this is my last one. This is NL. I put sub uh, N sub L because the last one, L means last. This is NL sine. So the incident angle is here, uh, uh, approaches 0. Yeah? Sine L equals to sine theta L should be equal to, because here is the vacuum. So this one is N1 sine theta out. This is theta out. 
So this one, N1, is basically vacuum because here is vacuum. This is vacuum as well. So I'm just going to delete this. So basically, this guy equals to this guy. The only way to satisfy this is to have the same value of theta. So the theta will be the same. Please remember this. Please remember. Okay? I have reason why I'm saying this is uh, important. This is really important. This is really, really important. Okay? Remember this. If you don't understand this, then I don't think you're going to make it for your uh, examination, your test.